In this lecture, we're going to talk about the command line and the different commands we're going to use during our troubleshooting process. Uh, this lecture is going to be focused on Windows. Our next lecture will be focused on Unix. So the command line tools. Uh, we use these tools to configure and troubleshoot our networks by issuing text-based commands at an operating system prompt. In this particular lecture, we're going to talk specifically about the Windows operating system. The commands can be either used on clients or servers, and for most of the time, these commands are going to be similar whether you're using a uh, host operating system or a, a server operating system. Uh, these commands are going to be specific to your operating system. So in this example, we're going to be using things like Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012. They'll work on most of the Windows operating systems for us. So when we start looking at the Windows system, to bring up the command prompt itself, we're going to use Windows key and R at the same time. That'll bring up a dialog box that'll be called the Run dialog box. At there, we will then type in CMD and hit Enter, and it will bring up a command prompt. If you're using Windows 7 or older, you can also click Start and go to Run and type in CMD and hit Enter. And if you're using Windows 8, all you have to do is hit the Windows key and start typing in CMD Enter, and it'll do it directly for you through the search pane. Once you're at the command prompt, you'll be able to use any of these commands. The first one we're going to talk about is ARP, and ARP stands for Address Resolution Protocol. The whole function of ARP is to show MAC addresses, the Layer 2, for known Layer 3 addresses. I have an example output there on the left side of the slide that shows you if you did ARP TAC A, which displays the current ARP table on your computer. In this computer, for example, we have two interface cards. You can see the two different IP addresses starting uh, because it's a server, and in this case, we can see all of the different um, IPs that it has learned and the MAC addresses associated with them. Notice how the 172.16.202.255, uh, which is a broadcast address, is all Fs because that's the broadcast for MAC. Same thing here for you, 255, 255, 255, 255, it's all broadcast as well. These other ones are all different machines we have seen, and these 224s are in the multicast range. And then we again have other ones down here. Notice how dot one and dot one, both their MAC addresses are the same because we're referencing the same machine. If you're using ARP TAC D and then an IP address, it will delete the ARP mapping for that particular IP. So in the example here on the left, if I did ARP TAC D 172.16.202.1 and then ran the ARP TAC A command, that line would no longer be there. The computer would forget that address. Uh, sometimes you can actually use what's called the static ARP entry, which is ARP TAC S and then you give it the IP and the MAC address you want. Sometimes this will be useful if you have a machine on the network, on the local network that you know is on there, but it's not pulling an IP and you still need to be able to access it. You can actually manually assign an IP that only your computer is going to understand and then reference it towards that MAC address. And so it's creating that static link for you. Um, I've done this a couple of times in troubleshooting. For the Network Plus exam, you're not going to be required to do this. It's just a more advanced technique that we can use. IP config. IP config stands for IP configuration. It's going to display the internet protocol address configuration on your Windows PC. If you do IP config slash all, it's going to give you all of the information. Uh, and that's an example I show you here. It's going to show you the information for every single interface you have. <clears throat> In this example, you have one local area network connection here and another area connection here uh, that's being shown. This one's actually a VPN connection. And so if you have three different uh, interfaces on there, like a wired connection and a wireless connection, they're all going to start showing up in here with different information. Some of the information you're going to get is the MAC address, which is the physical address, as you can see here. It's going to tell you if it's DHCP or not. In this case, it was. It's going to show you whether you have auto configuration enabled. It's going to show you what IP address you pulled. In this case, 192.168.103.1.103. Uh, it's going to show you your subnet mask, 255, 255, 255, in this case when the lease was given, when the lease expires. In this case, they're using one-day leases. Uh, it's going to show you the default gateway that's automatically assigned, the DHCP server that was assigned. And then if you have a IPv6 address, it will give you that as well. Again, your, D, uh, your DNS servers will be shown up and whether or not NetBIOS is enabled. All that information is going to be shown in ipconfig. If you do ipconfig without the slash all, you're not going to see things like the MAC address, the DNS servers, the gateways, all those big informations. You're just pretty much going to get your IP address. IP config slash release. If you have a DHCP address and you're not getting a good connection to the network, or if you pull one of those 169.254 IPPA addresses, you can use IP config slash release to drop that IP address. It will blank out your card, and then you're going to follow that up with an IP config slash renew, which requests a new DHCP address from the server. And you'll go through that DORA process again, the discover, the offer, the request, and the acknowledge, and the accept, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> the next one we're going to talk about is ping. 
Ping is used to check the IP connectivity between two network devices. And it, it gets its name from the old uh, like World War II submarine movie days, right? When you sent off a sonar ping, it would reach the other end and come back to you. Well, with our ping, it's going to tell us how long it takes to get from one destination to another, and is it up and running. So on the left here, you can see that we've done a ping uh, going against 192.168.1.122 with 32 bytes of data, which is the default. It's going to send it out four times by default in uh, Windows, and it will come back with how long it took. In this case, it took 62 seconds, 189 seconds, 113 milliseconds, and 32 milliseconds. All four were sent, all four were received, we had zero loss. That's a good connection. Conversely, if you have some percent of loss, if you have 100% loss, it means your connection is fully down. If it's sometimes up and sometimes down, you're going to have maybe 25% loss because you lose one out of four packets or something similar. Uh, if you want to ping more than four times, you use TACN. So ping TACN10, www.jasondion.com will ping my website 10 times and then stop. If I want to keep pinging forever and ever and ever, I'll use TACT. Ping TACT just keeps going on and on and on over and over until the user hits control C. Why would you want to do something like that? A lot of network environments I've been in, I've seen my system administrators will leave up a ping terminal with the TACT going to something like google.com that they know is always up. Um, and that way they can monitor their network connection and make sure it doesn't drop. And if they see that it drops because they start seeing no receipt, no receipt, no receipt, uh, that's when they'll know there's a problem with their WAN connection. They can go fix that. If you use ping tac 6, that's going to use IPv6s to route this traffic around instead of IPv4, which is what it uses by default. The next one we're going to use is Traceroute. And Traceroute actually uses the technology, the same, the same technology as ping. The difference is it's going to show us the route going from your source all the way to your destination. And it's going to show you every router along the way, every hop. So as you can see here on the left, I have uh, them pinging this remote site, and you can see it went through 11 different routers before it finally got where it was trying to go. Here we did it with by username, and again we had those 11 routers till we got to where we were trying to go. You can ping based on, uh, or excuse me, you can trace route based on the IP address, or you can trace route based on a name uh, using a DNS. And if you use the TAC6, it will use it based on IPv6, just like we did with ping. The next one we have is NVT stat. NVT stat. Let's fix that. The next one we have is NVT stat. NVT stat displays your NetBIOS information for IP based networks. NetBIOS is what is used by Windows to do local file sharing and local printer sharing. And it will display a list of NetBIOS device names learned by the PC. Uh, if you do net bio, uh, excuse me, NBT stat TAC A and the IP address, as the example on the left does, you'll actually get the table back of what the name of that PC is. In this case, the PC that we were looking at was called Metasploitable. And it's in a workgroup called Workgroup, not in a domain. If you do NBT TAC C, that is going to show you the cache on the local computer of everything it knows as well. And so as your computer starts talking on the network, every 13 minutes NetBIOS sends out the information. And so if you've been on the network for longer than 13 minutes and you do a taxi, you're going to know every Windows machine that's on that network with you on the same subnet. Um, and that's going to do it that way. With TAC A, you have to actually know the IP address and you can manually query what that computer is. The next one we have is NetStat. And NetStat is going to display information for IP connections on a PC. The information you're going to see is things like current sessions, including your source and destination IP and port numbers. So if you do TAC A, it's going to display all of your established connections. That's wrong. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so NetStat is going to display your information for IP-based connections on a PC. It's going to show you the current sessions that are there and the source and destination IP addresses and port numbers. If you use NetStat TAC A, it's going to show you all the connections and listening ports available. As you can see in my example here, we can see that there you have a bunch of TCP and a bunch of UDP connections. It shows you the local address, which is this particular computer, and what port it's on. And it shows you the foreign address, whether it's on that same computer or if it's on a distance computer, as this one has yahoo.com, and whether they're listening, established, or time waiting. NetStat TAC N will display the addresses and port numbers in numerical form. So here you saw that we had yahoo.com. Instead, if I want to see Yahoo's IP addresses, I could do it that way. It's usually more beneficial when doing network to do TAC N. 
and then we have uh, netstat tac s which is going to display the statistics for the connections at the bottom so it will tell you how many connections you had and how long they've been up and things like that generally when I run a netstat command I like to use tac a n it combines both of those and that way I get all the connections and listening ports and I get all the IP addresses NS lookup so NS lookup stands for name server lookup and what it does is it's going to resolve your fully qualified domain names to an IP address so if I want to convert jasondion.com to an IP, I can use NSLOOKUP. I can do this either in interactive mode or non-interactive mode. Non-interactive mode is when I do something like NSLOOKUP, www.jasondion.com, and hit enter. It'll come back immediately and tell me what my IP address is. If I just hit NSLOOKUP enter, I go into this, its own little interactive mode for a command prompt that allows me to actually change the name server if I want by typing server and then the IP address or name of the DNS server I want to use. And then I can do, um, if I look up, to look up the name, I would just type in jasondion.com and it would pull it up. From here, you can pull up MX records, which are mail records for DNS, A records, which are address records for DNS, uh, and C name records, which are your, your pointer records as well. When you're done with the interactive session, you've got to type exit to get out of it. On the left side of the screen here, this is the interactive mode. In this case, we did NS lookup, we entered the interactive mode, we looked up cisco.com, it pulled back the IP address, and then we did dlink.com and we pulled back those IP addresses, as you can see highlighted in red. The route command. Route is used to display or change the contents of the PC's current IP routing table. So your PC itself actually has routing abilities. And so if we do route print, it's going to display what your current routing table is. In the left example here, you can see a, a printout from the route print. If you did route delete and the IP, it'll take that one entry out, similar to what we did with ARP TACD to take out the ARP address. Uh, excuse me, the address, the, the IP and ARP binding in the ARP command. In this case, we're going to take away the IP routing. If you want to add a route, you can manually tell things where they want to route from one place to the other. You can use route add and then the two IPs routing from one to the other. As you can see here in the example on the left, the first entry, 0000, netmask 0000, that is a default gateway. It, what that's saying is that if we don't know, if this PC doesn't know what that address is in its routing table already, it's going to use that one. So, for instance, if I was trying to get to Google's DNS server, which is 8.8.8.8, .8 .8, if I look down the left side, there is no 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 network or 8. Dot something network. And so it's going to go out the default map, uh, the default gateway, which will send it out this connection, this 192.168.200.1. Sometimes on the exam, they'll give you a troubleshooting problem that might show you a route table. And if you don't see that 0000, that means you don't have a default gateway. And if you don't have a default gateway, it can cause the problems where you can't get off the network. So just remember that. And those are our basic command line tools that we use with Windows. In our next lecture, we'll talk specifically about Unix tools, many of which overlap with the Windows tools.